Simulations and Probability, Lesson 15.7a. Now we have 18 previous videos for Chapter 15, and there's a link in this description to the entire Chapter 15 playlist. Theoretical probability is the ratio of the number of equally likely outcomes in an event to the total number of possible outcomes. So it's a theory of what likely can be an outcome to possible outcomes. Experimental probability is the ratio of the number of times an event occurs to the number of trials that an activity is performed. So for experimental probability, we're actually going to try trials. In this one, we're going to use theories of what could happen. We can't always list the elements of the sample space for an event or calculate the theor theoretical probability. If this is the case, we can design an experiment that involves many trials and record the results of each trial to figure out the experimental probability. If we toss a coin a thousand times and heads comes up 489 times, we would have an experimental probability of 489 thousandths, or 0.489. We actually would be tossing the coin, and that's why it's experimental. We're actually doing it. And many times it's either impractical or impossible to do an experiment directly. If the possibility that a radio is defective 0 0.02 times, what's the probability that there are 10 or less defective radios in a shipment of 1,000? We can't test every single radio, but we could do it theoretically. We can also simulate this quickly with a model. To use a simulation to approximate the probability of an event, we define the problem, we select a model, we define a trial, and then collect data by running trials. So theoretically, for this radio, if 0 0.02 radios are defective, that means two one hundredths, or two out of 100, are defective. So for 1,000, that means 20 one thousandths are defective, or 0 0.020. The probability that 10 or less are defective, because that's what it said, 10 or less, is theoretically zero, because we figured 20 would be defective. See? A dart player has a 0.6 average of hitting a bullseye. What's the probability that the player will hit a bullseye twice in a row? So first thing we're going to do is define the problem. We're going to find the probability that the player, with 0.6 average will make two consecutive bullseyes. The next thing we're going to do is select a model. And this can be modeled with two spinners that have three-fifths of their areas labeled bullseye and two-fifths labeled missed. So if the average is 0.6, that's six-tenths, and we can simplify that to three-fifths. That's why three-fifths is going to be bullseye and two-fifths is going to be misses. So if we make these two spinners, one spinner will be the first shot, and the other will be the second shot. And we can spin this one and spin this one. We can define a trial. The trial would be spinning each spinner once. And we can collect data by running 50 trials. So we do it 50 times, spinning these. So we can say bullseye for both shots would be maybe 19 if we did this experiment. It could be some other number, but we're going to say it's 19. And let's say that not bullseyes for both shots would be 31. So 19 out of 50 were successful, okay? So that's if we're spinning this, okay? Let's say we did spin it. Well, if 19 out of 50 were successful, then 38% of the time, the player made a bullseye with both shots. This would be 19 times 2 is 38, and 50 times 2 is 100, so that's 38 one-hundredths. That's how we got the 38%. The theoretical probability is 0.6 times 0.6, it equals 0.36. Well, the difference between the theoretical probability of 0.36 and 0.38, what we got from spinning our spinners, from that spinner simulation, is the result of a simulation. It's an approximation. So this 0.38 is just an approximation. The more trials we run, the better our approximation will be. So the more trials we run, the more likely we'll be closer to the theoretical probability of the event. We'll be closer to the 0.36. Okay? And what's the probability that a family with four children has three boys and one girl? 
And so this problem can be modeled by flipping four coins. We can say heads is boy and tails is girl. So our trial is represented by flipping four coins and a success is represented by three heads and one tail. So a coin is perfect for this one because our choice is boy or girl. So it's heads or tails, see? If we do 50 trials, we could get the results and this is just an example of the results we can get with 50 trials. Each one with the green is a success. So we end up with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 successes. So we figured the probability is 13 ths which is 26 100ths, which is 0.26. So that would be the probability of the family having three boys and a girl. Okay, a little more than one-fourth of the time, huh? A fast food restaurant is giving six different toys with children's meals. What's the probability of getting all six toys if we buy ten meals? The probability of getting any one toy is one-six. There's one of six different toys, so it's one-six. And we can model this problem with a number cube. Since there's six toys and a number cube, a die has six sides, a trial would consist of rolling the number cube 10 times and seeing if all six numbers turn up in 10 rolls. If they do, our trial is a success. We can do 25 trials and let's say we get seven successes. The experimental probability of getting all six toys in 10 meals is 7 25ths or 28 one hundredths, which equals 0.28. Okay? We can pretend that each number on the number cube is one of the six toys, see? And we just roll it ten times to see if each number comes up at least once, okay? So it's very important to choose an appropriate model. Flipping a coin is okay if the probability is 0.5 if it's half, because Half of the chance it could be heads, half of the chance it could be tails. But it wouldn't work if our probability was 0.6. Flipping a coin would not be a good model, okay? Our next lesson is using a random number table. It's going to be 15.7b. We're going to use a random number table to simulate an event and determine experimental probability, okay? So keep trying. I'm really proud of you. And I hope you understood what we talked about, and I'll see you next time. Bye.